what we drink today on this podcast, bud? So this week on today's YouTube video, we <laughs> we drank the Domino Effect. Yes, we by did by Muckish Brewing out of Torrance, California. That's our first Monkish beer. Correct. As they'll find out. Correct. And I know we say it in the video, but we'll thank Hop Topic again yes. for providing such a, a beer. I won't even say what it is, what it tastes like. Thank you for supplying the beer. Also, we go over uh, the importance of the squeeze. Ugh. We go over that, and then we go. We, I laid the foundation of conspiracy theories that I've been studying to go over for future episodes. So check that out. I cannot wait. Type in the comment section if I'm missing something or mess up. We want to talk about it. This is a fun episode, though. Cheers, guys. Stay groovy. And just like that, we back. Yeah. New week, new us. No, new week, same boss. Trust me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the same. I was trying to sound, you know, like we might have learned something <laughs> since the last week. <laughs> Absolutely not. Dude, so what are we drinking today? Today we have Domino Effect by Monkish Brewing Company out of Torrance, California. So what I know about this brewery is this is one of the top hazy IPA breweries out there. West Coast? They're on the West Coast out in California. No, but they make the hazies. Okay. So, uh, yeah. This yeah. apparently is super clean, one of the best out there. We can thank our boys from Hot Topic for uh, donating this beverage to us. Appreciate y'all. Yes, we do. Because I'm still learning how to get beer like all these guys do. These dudes get beer. Like I was at a at a the Growler spot last night. Mm -hmm. This dude poured out pulled pulled out like eight cans of beer out of his backpack. From all over the United States. You just can't get delivered here. They do like different delivery services and stuff like that. I'm going to figure it out so we can stay ahead of what's big. But that's a double dry hopped pale ale right there. And you know how I've said it in the past on this thing? I love, love anything double dry hopped. I smell it. I, from the pool, I could smell all that fucking citrus. I shit. have heard so much good stuff about this brewery. So... Man, if this was like Ghost in the Machine, I'm going to throw this fucking can at you. I don't, I've never had them. That can art's a little... I've seen a lot of their can art, and it's pretty cool, but I feel like that can art's kind of blase. Well, it's it's a bunch of dominoes that... And brown first, ones at that. At first, I thought they were bricks until you actually look at it and see that it's yeah. actually dominoes. But I mean, on the side of the dominoes... I thought they look like Legos. It has, you know, monkish, the seven percent ABB, drink freshy, DDH, Indian pale ale. So everything is wrote on their their can or everything you need to know about this beer. So I'm not gonna say anything. From the look on your face, I don't have to throw this fucking can at you. I don't think you're gonna have to. <laughs> we shall see. <laughs> it is in the same realm. Okay. I'm going to let you try it before I say my thoughts on it. Yes. Remember, uh, that uh, Ghost in the Machine is not double dry hopped. I know. And so we're, you're going to get a, yeah. you're not going to, same kind of beer, but not. As. Not, yeah. That smell, dude, for a hazy. You can smell it. I mean, and, and the color is. Exactly That's, what you expect. Is, is is that, if you looked up hazy, proper hazy beer, like the bona fide definition of what a hazy IPA is supposed to look like, that yeah. I would say that's the fucking color. I mean, like, that's, that's it. I feel like that's they it. knock that out. Okay, the smell is exactly what you expect from an IPA. Mm -hmm. And, uh... A DDH, as you like to refer to them as. Yeah. Uh, is very citrusy. Very, very citrusy. It has a good smell to it, though. That smells good. It's good smell. I thoroughly enjoy the smell. Mm. 
surprisingly good. <laughs> it's very fresh, dude. Like that's super fresh. This is very surprisingly it's good. Seven percent. It's light. It's very clean. So they're notorious. There's a few breweries like Maine Brewing Company and a few other ones that I won't list off. Uh, that are very clean. Like I say that they don't have like that kind of malty taste. They don't have all this extra like kind of like just weird flavor in them they're clean and pinpointed flavored and this is one of those breweries that's apparently top people who don't like ipas Uh uh-huh might enjoy this i that's that's highly possible yeah i I would agree with that that's a that's a good good introduction yes although you are proper fucked if that's your first ipa and then you start drinking other beer after that yeah like you legit to had to start with the best and then yeah. it's like oh man that's so fucking good for being uh because hazy i don't like hazies because you get the taste but it's very smooth and it don't stick Cur- stick there forever it's like it, you get yeah. the taste and as soon as that there's really you really don't have that strong back end that you used to of, you know it's not dirty. It's clean. You don't have a lot of like wasted flavors in there. You're like That's chewing on it. Good. Yeah. Once again, thank you, Hot Topic, for donating this beer to thank our you. podcast channel YouTube thing. It's it that's more of a YouTube channel than a podcast. We have no idea what to call this thing. We still <laughs> remember day one. We were like, "What are, was this a podcast or YouTube thing or what are we?" These are just some silly videos that we post on YouTube. When I when we first started doing these and I had to do the introduction, now I'm a little more comfortable. But when we were first starting, I didn't know what to say. I didn't know how to do it, and I would always get tripped up on. This week's podcast or this week's YouTube video, I never knew what to call this. And it would like it would always come blurting out when I actually had to talk. I was like, hey, damn it. What is this thing? This is a YouTube video. This is a YouTube video that may one day turn into a podcast YouTube video. <laughs> the route we're going. We've almost hit 100 subscribers. <laughs> we're at 95, dude. We hit 100 and I honestly think I'm going to celebrate. Yeah. Oh, we're gonna celebrate. I'll meet you at the saucer and meet you somewhere. We'll have a beer we'll too. Have and, three beers. and then and then and then who gives all. who gives a shit? Yeah. <laughs> I feel like it's a pretty I feel like that is one of the coolest things as a human I've ever done is to have a hundred subscribers on YouTube. Like what is it why is that so fucking cool compared to like sell it like we have a couple, we've had some new shirts. We got a couple coming out and you see your design come to life on a shirt and it's so cool. Mm-hmm. Like it's a really cool feeling. And to see people wearing it, like when I get on Instagram and they don't tag kilos and ounces, but I'll see it on them in passing, like in a video, it's a cool feeling. But for some reason, the whole subscriber on YouTube thing is super cool to me because they're listening to us talk about it. Like they, they're listening to us. This Dump is us. Shit. They're watching. <laughs> It's not a shirt. They're watching us talk weird shit. All right. Let's get down to business. Do you want... Man, let's start out with the lifting thing. We didn't talk about lifting last week. Um, You being the bodybuilder type. I know a couple weeks ago we talked about curl, like an arm workout. or No, it was chest. We talked about a chest workout that you created. Let's talk to... Let's talk about the importance of the squeeze. And why squeezing at the top of the movement is important. Now, you being uh, just a humble weightlifter, you probably don't have the synopsis firing of the muscle at the 90% uh, exertion rate. You probably don't have all that in there. But let's talk about the importance of the squeeze. Like at the top of your curl, like when you're doing a chest workout and you uh, pinch it at the top. What... What what am I talking about, Buzz, so people know? I think the squeeze is more for that the mind muscle connection. Mm-hmm. So you actually feel what muscle is working. I feel like this is a conspiracy theory. 
in the muscle in the lifting so world. You, you think I'm full? <laughs> the, the, the mind muscle connection. No, I believe you're right, but dude, that sounded very conspiratorial. <laughs> like this guy sits in his basement, and comes out with workouts, just, just spitting this nonsense out here. Yeah, we're gonna get flagged. <coughs> All this UFO talk in the past. <laughs> ah, these guys are talking about the uh, the squeeze, the squeeze on a pump. Yes. So you saying it's the the mind and muscle connection? Yes. That is mainly what I use it for. I'm sure they got some nerd out there with a scientific mm-hmm. shit. Yeah. That'll tell you what it's for and all that. But me personally, and and whenever I'm working out with somebody, and I tell them to make sure they squeeze that muscle. That way they they feel what muscle they actually using on that exercise. Cause Correct. Just a simple movement of, you know, your arm, just a different hand placement could put put that resistance somewhere else. So, I mean, in, unless you're actually feeling what muscle you're doing on what specific exercise. Mm-hmm. Well, I think it's right in saying that um, you it when you squeeze that muscle, you know you're working it. Mm-hmm. Because it was like what we were talking about a couple weeks back with the – the dips, whether it's hitting the chest or hitting the tricep. And if you're squeezing that area and it's exerted more on that particular movement, you know you're hitting that right. particular muscle that you're yeah. wanting to hit. Uh, also, it will tax the living shit mm-hmm. out of that what you're working. So if I'm doing, uh, you know, and I learned this from you. If I, I, P90X, he would always say squeeze at the top when I was doing P90X, but that was it for like curls and stuff. So that was in my head, but as far as other movements, it never was there. Mm-hmm. Remember one time you tell me squeeze at the top of you know leg extensions. So now I do. Uh, when you squeeze at the top of leg extensions, dude, it's like throwing gasoline on your workout. But it it is also so like you say the leg extension or even a dumbbell curl or any type of curl, getting all the way to the top. Mm-hmm. That's that's your full range of motion. That's yeah. that's at that's at the top. Mm-hmm. So the only way a muscle grows is fully stretched and fully squeezed. So you got to get that full range of motion, and mm-hmm. that that squeezing at the top also helps with that too. Yeah, I feel like if if so if you just did ten, you know, leg extensions, you could blow through them. But if you squeeze at the top. You get to five, six, and mm-hmm. ten starts feeling very maybe not possible. Mm-hmm. So it definitely works those legs out or works whatever body movement you're doing. Yeah, because any anybody could do every movement, mm-hmm. but it's all about intent and execution of that movement. Yeah, you know that could make a big old difference. So with curls, you're trying to squeeze at the top. Leg extensions here. When you're doing hip thrusts, you want to squeeze the ass at the top. So fucking hip thrust. What? Squeeze it at the top. The glutes need to be squeezed at the top. I don't even know why people do hip thrusts. They want big asses, bud. Everybody knows that. If you want a big ass, fucking squat and lunge. Stop being a fucking pussy. No, nobody should be doing fucking hip thrust. That's fucking dumb. I will do hip thrust and I can attest that your ass will grow. And it's weird having a sore ass. Some people have it for other reasons. This reason being working out. It works. Hip thrust. It works. So when Glo- you the glute pump gets real, dude. When you got 400 pounds on your back and you're doing a full squat. Mm hmm. That's for people that actually do go below parallel, mind you. That's when it hit in the ass, yes. So, when I've got 500 pounds, 500 plus pounds on my back so doing sets feel, of 10. You feel it more on the hip thrust than you do on those heavy squats. Oh, for sure. Yeah, because I feel like it's the, that, in all honesty, uh, you don't know funniness aside. Oh, yeah. It's a, uh, man, when you squeeze up at the top, like at the top of a curl or something like that, dude, my ass will catch fire. Like, just absolute fire. Holy shit. All I'm saying, I don't see you with no legging sponsors talking about how you grew your ass by doing hip thrusts. I, I don't do enough hip thrusts, to be honest with you. I think I should up that up, see if see if there's something at the end yeah, of that yes, rainbow. Yes, yes, please. Maybe I'll should. incorporate that like I've been doing in my calf workouts. My calf 
workouts. Let's all talk about my calves. They're small. No way, if ends or buts. I love like I love when people say, "Oh, dude, skip leg." They've never personally said that to me, but I've seen it on people's posts because their calves are small uh-huh. and they lift. I have over four hundred pound squat without an issue, so I lift like legs. I deadlift. I just got small calves. So this year, December thirtieth, I was like, I'm gonna measure my calves. I'm gonna take notes about what I'm doing to get them bigger. So it's me. Yeah, they've grown a half an inch. Really? Yeah, no shit. Yeah, I measured them uh, last month. So they that uh, was cold or with a pump? That was cold. Yeah, I, I was pretty a half inch. Yeah, they they they've been growing. Dude, they were super. They're so skinny right now. Like I, I could be self conscious if I was the type to be self conscious, but they have grown just a little bit. You giving all us small calf people hope? I and but this like legit. I'm giving it like uh, full attention. Yeah. Wednesdays after my deadlifts, I walk straight to the calf machine. Saturdays after I'm done squatting, I go straight to the fucking calf machine, and I'll hit like a couple of them. Standing ones, the seated ones. Uh, I've been also changing my foot position yeah, and shape that, and all that. I don't think that does anything. I hear but, it does, and I hear it doesn't. Yeah. Like who? I'm fucking hitting everything, <laughs> bud. Like I'm doing it all. Stolen, unturned. Yeah, I'm fucking flipping all of every table over in this restaurant. I'm gonna find out what I need to find out. No, I'm hitting it. Yeah, and they did grow. Now it. Would you like to see him bigger? Yeah, but I mean, maybe if I could take five years from now, I could have you a normal have sized calf. Uh, I'm not going to have that sort of hope. Uh, maybe I'll just have like a normal size like human being, you know, like the out of shape people yeah. that you see in line in front of you and they got those really nice calves, but they don't work out. Dude. I'm hoping that's going to be me. Dude. I've we got to s- stop I've, working out. I've been saying it. There's only two people with calves. People born with them mm-hmm. and fat people. Oh, that's true. That's the only two people that got calves. <sighs> yeah, it is interesting. Because I don't know a motherfucker who works out calves diligently. I seen some dudes the other who day. Who got big old calves. There was they a, had big old calves before they started working there out. There was a dude at Alpha Land the other day. I was working out with a, with a fellow calf worker outer. And this dude came over after us and was using a stand-up calf machine. It, they were works of art. Yeah. I was staring at them, and I'm like, just jealous. He he's he's, he's one of the kid he's one of the kiddos that has grown exponentially in a year, ah. more so than what you should grow in a year. Wink and a nod. And his calves, I'm smelling what you're cooking. Are like he's legit getting big ass calves. Yeah, he was through the whole fucking stack on there. And I'm thinking, okay, he throws a whole stack. He's going to do some bullshit like half repping calf things all the way down, all the way up, so locked it out up top. So you're saying full range of motion. Yeah, huh? yeah. Squeezing at the top. Yep. There but it was, it, it, you're just like, ah, you're one of those dudes that actually <laughs> figured out how to build the calf. <laughs> yeah. That's what I need to do. Man. He was probably fat sometime. In his I, life. We may have to just, we calf. may just have to stop this episode. The sadness is just ah. overwhelming. No, I remember, I'll, I'll be honest, have some fun with this talk. I remember in high school being like super like self-conscious and wearing jeans all the time. No, I wasn't that bad, but I remember like wearing shorts and just being like, everybody knows I got skinny legs and it, it would, you think about it like all the time. And then two years into like my, uh, into college type thing, they beat the shit out of us about pride and stuff in that church group. And that all just left. I got to where it was just like, this is who you are. Like, that's it. No big deal. So now it doesn't bother me. And that's I like how God made you. I love when people he made like you perfect. Just like you. Are. I love when people tease me about it. Cause I think most people are just trying to be nice, but I'll get a few people on Instagram. They send me them damn like Jim fail nations with like small cash shit. And I'm like, <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. Damn it. You want to do the, uh, the sponsor sponsor before we get into the real shit. Yeah. Today is sponsor you brought to it by Late July Snacks. And we have the Mexican street corn. Elote. I, I, I guess since they know we live in Houston and You know what happened? You know what we were talking about earlier on in this episode about how 
somebody starting out with this really good IPA uh-huh. would be spoiled and everything else would taste like shit afterwards. Uh-huh. Last week's chips set a very high tone. Those Pringles that we had, they got a lot to live up to, these late July chips. Okay, they got that cool looking old school. That's a knockoff burrito. Out. This tastes like a little bit like a Tostito with a little seasoning on top. Just a little dusting. Yeah, that's not bad. No. Not great. Not bad. That bag would get finished if I had it. Mexican street corn. Yeah, it's got elote on the side. So for you uh, Spanish speakers out there, elote. I speak a lot of Spanish, as you can tell. I don't. I don't speak a fucking lick of it. <laughs> Enchiladas, quesadillas. I try not to go. Numero to uno on the menu, please. All right. For the wa- for the watchers out there, they know we'll get into the conspiracy theories every once in a while. We're not going to go deep today, but we're going to set. We're going to do a little foundation here. I'm going to let you know. I've been doing a little bit of studying for fun. I'm interested. I now. do not believe. <laughs> let me just say this strongly. I don't believe these are necessarily true. Now, with every conspiracy theory, there's some truth in it, which makes it, you know, a little probable. Mm -hmm. But I'm having fun with it, so we have something to talk about in the future. That being the Adam and Eve story. Are you familiar with that one? With the apple? Not the Jesus one or the God one. The beginning of our human species, apparently, in the Christian world. It is the theory of our poles, which I'm new to this, so if I misstate this, I will correct it on an episode in the future, will shift the magnetic poles, will shift, and utter destruction happens. So from what I know about it, I might say this wrong, but I'm learning, the poles will shift, thus... Antarctica will no longer be cold. It will shift down to like the equator line. The equator lines will move up to like our poles. When this happens, you think, oh, I'll get in a bunker, you know, ride this one out. Apparently, what is stated is it will cause such a giant tsunami that will be roughly two miles tall of ocean water blowing across the planet. The planet moves at about a thousand miles per hour, like turns. Mm-hmm. It will stop on a dime. Oh, we fucked. So, what will happen is a lot of people will take flight. Exactly. So, drive 60 miles an hour and lock up your brakes. Everybody knows once an object's in motion, stays in motion. You're like, what? It's how most people die in a car, in a car crash. It's the instant stopping that's the issue, not the actual crash, but the stopping abruptly uh so what will happen then is like a thousand mile an hour wind will kick up because everything on the planet will still keep going the air everything will still stay in motion in the atmosphere and so you'll get this thou- this two two store or two miles high tsunami comes through if you live through that at the speed of sound this fucking thousand mile an hour wind's gonna come blowing through and then as it adjusts, everything will freeze. So we'll have like a really bad ice age. And then if humans survive, they'll basically in the Stone Age again. They're thinking that this has happened. Well, they know it's happened a few times. But they're thinking that this is one of the theories on how the ice, ca- or you know, how the North Pole happened, how freezes have happened in the past, how mass extinctions have happened in the past. I'm digging into it for fun. Because it's, 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 so we so have I'm, had pole I'm, changes. I'm Let, trying to get, why is it called the Adam and Eve? I don't know. I'm digging into it. Okay, but I know I, that's what it's called. I'm still stuck on the Adam and Eve. So I, I watched a YouTube video on it and it, you know, like they didn't talk about just where the name came from. Mm-hmm. I was going over the overview. I looked up for stupid people. What is this uh, theory? So, I mean, we've had pole changes in the past, and the magnetic fields are changing constantly. I mean, that's just the way this world is. It's when it happens, like, catastrophically, when it really changes. 
and that's when this happens. So if you really want to freak yourself out, that's how you do it. That's a uh, dying while looking at a two mile high tsunami wave. Sounds like a good way to go. Yeah, I feel like it's gonna. You'd hope. Like, what if it runs you over, and then the back end of it, Bad. there's, like, not much water there, so you're like, oh, well, shit, hurts. I made it through. And water then all hurts. of a sudden, like, a boat smashes into you. You're like, oh, <laughs> shit. Loch Ness Monster gets displaced. Oh, like, Nessie. Fire, just fire, fire, yeah. just Nessie was real. It just took this <laughs> two-mile-high two tsunami to come through to uproot her. But, yeah, so we're going to dig into that here, like, in a couple of weeks. Maybe on the next uh, run of podcasts we do, I'll know enough to sit here and really – Answer some questions for you. Because the, the thing I really enjoy about conspiracy theorists that if you listen to them and give them enough time, mm -hmm. the ideas sound very they sound very reasonable. Oh you know, yeah! If you listen to a especially if they're thought theory, out, right? Yeah, long enough, they'll, they'll, you'll start to believe. Like, man, that's that sounds like it could kind of be true. You know what I'm saying? We're and that's why I picked a few. This isn't the only one that I've mm -hmm. picked. I've picked. I'm not going to do the flat Earth because that's just. I think we can all agree the, the flat Earth that's is just, yeah. That's, I think that's the fucking joke of the conspiracy theorists. But theorist. there is documentation that I was digging into on it that the CIA had blocked this info from coming out. Like you can Google it. Like it they were they redacted these files not too long ago. They also did that with the UFOs too. Correct. But there's something behind this kind of thing. So that's why I thought it was fun to talk about because it also is possible. Like the polls can change and everything can change. Uh but the theory of it and everything sound interesting. Also, what we're going to talk about and what's been hurting my goddamn head, dude. I still can't figure it out. Quantum computing. We're going to talk about quantum computing. So I'm teasing all these f future See, episodes. I, I don't know anything about so, that. So just to tease everybody, the little knowledge that I've been getting. <sighs> quantum computing is just light years ahead of where I believe our computers are right now. Like, I think they're really, uh, we've, as far as computers, we've really tapped into the potential of what a computer can do now. I think that you can, you can always go get better, bigger, faster, stronger, better memory. But I think they've achieved like where the computer as we know it can go. Quantum computing is the next frontier, uh, spaceships and shit, that sort of stuff. Yeah, what was weird to me is finding out that quantum computing is literally in atoms. They all the computing is on atoms. So in order to, and I'm learning how that all this goes on to an atom. So I'm, when you ask a question, I don't know. I'm just telling you everything I know now, and then I'm gonna learn more about what I know. Uh, you have to keep this computing system at absolute zero. Because these molecules cannot move. As soon as they start to shift, it'd be like you shaking the living shit out of your Xbox when the disc was in there. Like once the disc starts, you know, skipping on like your old Walkmans and I'm shit. Not an it starts Xbox to skip. Fan. But uh, you had yourself a little uh, CD player back in the day, huh? Uh -huh. And it had like the, the protector on it where you could shake it a little bit and it would protect it. Well, if you get it moving, it stops playing. It skips ahead, stops working. So if you shake these atoms around and start moving. It stops working. So they have to keep this like computer thing at absolute zero. Like that, sub zero? Uh, what is absolute zero? Is that like negative two? Dude, I'm going to look like <laughs> such a dummy on this until I figure this out. This was uh, this is on my list to look up is what is absolute zero. Well, you um, don't have to answer it if you don't know it. No, but I want to say it's like a very, very cold, like, I'm just going to go out. It's like negative 200 or something. I think, I think it's super cold and it's shit just is like, frozen like it's space kind of absolute zero i believe is what space is or some shit like that the absence of things moving and whatnot you fucking don't know what i'm talking about absence of heat sure let's go with that <laughs> but we're gonna get into some quantum computing because these things that they fascinate me the quantum which is funny because quantum computing really isn't conspiratorial but it's so fucking <sighs> string theory gets involved 
All never of the, heard of it. You've never heard of string theory? Oh, dude, I'm not the right person right now. So look, where does AI fit into all this computing shit? So AI, like chat GPT right now, I'm doing research on all this and uh, I'm a beginner. Chat GPT right now, I believe, is running amok on the internet, taking, reading like everything that we ever have posted. So it's not necessarily smart in itself. Like it's not thinking it's for itself. Quick. It's just taking everything that it's read, putting it together, and giving you an answer. Yeah. So it's if it quick. reads a bunch of like high school pe- kids' papers and shit that were all wrong, that's its knowledge. It doesn't know whether it's fact or fiction, per se. Uh, it's just going to spit it out at you. Quantum computing, apparently, will be able to tell fact from fiction because it it figures out every angle and every question or answer to the question in multiple like different uh, uh what's the uh, universes like it's like mo- it can figure out things in all universes like every answer every angle answer like if you flip a coin 10 times how what how many percent is it going to be tails or heads like it's just it figures all that shit out they're saying that quantum computing will also be able to like possibly figure out aging like you will be able to figure out like how to put limbs on. Like if you get your limb, like an arm taken off, it'll be able to break down the molecules of what it takes to fashion you a brand new arm. Like it's just so depthy that it's hard for me to even explain right now. I need to like really sit in it and like ask all the questions and stuff and really figure it out. I was talking to Travis last night about uh quantum computing and I was like, God, I got to talk to more people about this so I can get a better thing to chat with you with on it. But it's fascinating. So Travis is somewhat of a nerd. Yeah, he's an IT guy. Yeah. He he knew about? Oh, yeah. Ever, uh, yeah. Anybody in the computer world is going to know about quantum computing. Okay. I believe that we do have a few quantum computers. They're just not, um, they're not firing on all cylinders yet. Like Google, IBM, China, all these people are like, it's the new like space race. To figure out quantum computing, because once you figure out, apparently, when you figure out quantum computing, no code is safe. It will crack all passwords. It, like I said, it literally figures out everything, every possible answer in real time. Like it just, it goes into computing and will figure it out. Like it'll, jo- it'll just break into your phone, so break into fuck, everything. Yeah. yeah, whoever finds that out first, like figures out the quantum computer first at like a high level. Yeah, they're gonna be light years ahead of everybody else. That's why there's a big race. I'm excited to dig into it. It seems like it's going to be very fascinating for an episode. It'd be nice if one of us knew a legit-ass scientist that we could get on here, but you guys have me. (laughs) You're welcome. I'd rather take you. Yeah, but it's been something that's been fascinating to me. The the Adam and Eve thing just, I mean, that's a possibility. Like super volcanoes. Like, are we due for one that literally Ah, takes out the planet? Yellowstone's about to erupt. But dude, you know how like within the next five hundred years, you know how insanely scary that's gonna be if that bad boy literally just decides uh, we it's mega time. Yeah, like we w- fucked. Yeah. 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 Like literally, <clears throat> I would never see you again. Yeah. Unless I was just like, I'm gonna drive there right now to go see Bud on the other side of town before all this ash and shit <laughs> just causes a giant ass freeze of the Boom. world. Yeah. Could you imagine the shockwave off that? Like people in the military have felt shock waves, or people that have been around things that explode have been around some shock waves. But a shock wave of a super volcano, that's got to cause some anxiety when that thing hits you in the chest. Like, boom. Whew. Super volcanoes, quantum computing, Magma. and the Adam and Eve theory will be things that we venture into in the future. I'm pretty excited about these uh, conspiracy theory things and in depth stuff. Hey, man, we went from talking about the squeeze to world-ending stuff. What do you think about our beer here today, bud? Highly impressed. It's actually a good goddamn beer. I finished it. This is probably the best double dry-hopped IPA I've ever drank. Um, I, I, I agree. So you would you would want me to get more monkish beer so we could taste more of their beer if they're all good yes yeah i don't for some everybody that i've heard 
trying these or that gets a hold of them, they're all like just absolute bangers, as the kids would say. They they don't miss. They hit every time. It's got to be a good feeling to know that you you're that you're that good right. to where like your foundation is so solid that even when you experiment, it's still going to be good. Now, whether it's you're achieving greatness is one thing, but every beer that you have come out, everybody's like, yeah, this is really good. It's better than others. Uh, but then you have ones that, you know, I guess they challenge themselves to and reach new heights of incredible beer. You got anything? No, nope, that's it. Are you excited about learning about these things in the future? I can't wait to learn about Adam and Eve. Is that that's the one that intrigues you the most of the quantum computing? I computer. I don't give a fuck about the kind of yeah. The Adam and Eve thing really. Uh, I mean, anybody can Google it or yeah, Google it and then go to YouTube. So if you're watching this, you can do that, uh, and then check me in the comments. It's okay. I could take some constructive criticism about that too, not just my calves. But, you don't know uh, what you're talking about, bro. I'm for it, dude. The more y'all fucking question us, the higher the algorithm goes on these. Talk shit all you want in them. But yeah, you got anything else? That's it. All right. Cheers, guys. Cheers, guys. Go get a monkish beer, especially if you're in the California area. Dude, if you're in California, you, you should be drinking monkish IPAs. If you're in California, send us some monkish beer. Yeah.